Okay, welcome to podcast 4.4, and this is going to be looking at the empirical and molecular formulas of substance, and we're going to be following this kind of flow chart up here. So now that we know how to find the mass percent, we're going to be able to give an empirical formula. But before we can get to that, we need to talk about mass percent again. So from a mass percent, we can calculate, like I said, an empirical formula. Remember the mass percent, this is the percent composition of compounds compounds and that was podcast three so if you don't remember what this is you need to go back and look at this again and see how we find the mass percent of things when we're talking about an empirical formula the empirical is the lowest whole number ratio lowest whole number ratio of uh, elements in a compound. Okay, so we're going to be taking these compounds, we're going to be finding the lowest ratio of things that I can find, kind of like we need to find the lowest whole number ratio of a balanced chemical reaction. Empirical formulas do the same thing. So an empirical formula versus a structural formula. Let's look at a structural first. This is what we're used to, and I'm going to use glucose as my example because it's a good, it's a good look at what we're looking at. So glucose has the formula C6 H12 O6. This is showing me that I have six carbon atoms bonded to 12 hydrogens and 12 oxygens. This shows me every atom uh, in the compound. So the structural is every atom in a compound. So the numbers of atoms as well. The empirical formula then is the lowest ratio. Well, if we're looking at this, I have a six, a 12, and a six. And that means that I can factor these out. I can factor a 6 out of each of these. So I'm looking for a common factor for these. So glucose's empirical formula, after we factor 6 out, factor out a 6, becomes CH2O. And this only shows me the ratio of each atom in the compound. Okay, so the empirical formula is for showing ratios only, lowest whole number, and the structural formula is showing every atom in the compound. We're looking at every single um, atom that's included. So we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a ratio of 6 to 12 to 6, which is the same as 1 to 2 to 1 down here in the empirical formula. So how do we do this? Well, after finding the mass percentage, you need to assume you have 100 grams of the compound because if you have 100 grams, that means that your percent can be a gram value. So if I have 100 grams of, well, we're going to look at an example next. Then we need to convert from grams into moles. Remember, moles is your stepping stone before we can go anywhere else because this is looking at an objective number. We're looking at a total number of things just like the dozen. I can have half a dozen of something and half a dozen of something else. Their masses will be different but the moles are the same. I can have that same amount. Then we look at a mole ratio and then we change whole numbers if it's a if it's a decimal. So we need to change to whole numbers and give a final formula. So let's talk through this. Uh, this, com this question gives us 17.5% sodium, 39.7% chromium, and 42.8% oxygen. What is the empirical formula? Because I've got three different quantities here, I need to do three separate calculations. So remember, the first thing we do is assume 100 grams. So if we're assuming 100 grams, 17.5% of 100 simply becomes 17.5 grams of sodium. 39.7% changes to 39.7 grams of chromium, and then 42.8 grams of oxygen. So I've got three different calculations here that we need to carry out. Okay, so step one, assume 100 grams. Step two, now we need to change from grams into moles of these compounds. So if you set up your ratio, one mole of sodium is equal to 22.99 grams, cancel out your units. Chromium, one mole of chromium is equal to, let's see, 52 grams. Remember, you only need to keep two decimal places, and one mole of oxygen is equal to 16 grams. Okay, so after we change to moles, I end up with 0.761 moles of sodium. For the chromium, 
we have 0 0.763 moles and for the oxygen we end up with 2.68 moles okay so step two I've gone from gram values over here to mole values okay just one quick conversion step three says then we need to find the mole ratio and to find the mole ratio we need to divide by the smallest mole or the fewest moles or the least moles by the smallest mole value and that will give us a ratio of something to one so it will give us a ratio of x for everything else to one so we're comparing something to the lowest number of one of the other ones so if I'm looking at these 0 0.761, 0 0.763, and 2.68 I'm going to be dividing by 0.761 and when you do these questions, they will be close enough to a whole number or a half number to where you, where you know what you need to do. Um, so 0.761 divided by itself gives me a ratio of 1. 0.763 divided by 0.761 is also close enough to a ratio of 1. It's like 1.00 something. And then this ratio here works out to about 3.5. Okay. So... After we've got our mole ratios, we can write the empirical formula. And I'm kind of running out of space. I apologize for that. So we end up with sodium has one, mole, or one atom. Chromium is one, so NaCr, and then O, 3.5. But from this, we know that we cannot have three and a half oxygen atoms. So I need to do something to this, but keep the ratio the same. So what we end up doing is multiplying the entire thing by two. And that gives me the final formula, which I will put up here as Na2Cr2O7. This is the empirical formula of a compound with these percent ratios. Okay, so follow one through four. So first thing you need to do, take your percentages and assume you have 100 grams, change from grams to moles, multiply by the mole whole rate or multiply by or I'm sorry divide by the fewest number of moles and then multiply by an integer if you have a, a decimal or less than a whole number because the molecular formula or the structural formula is only a multiple of the empirical we can convert from one to the other. So remember, the empirical for glucose was CH2O. If I multiply this by 6, I end up with the structural formula, C6H12O6. It's just a multiple of this. And we can figure out what this multiple is. And we do this by multiplying the empirical weight by the ratio of the empirical to the formula weight. Okay, so the empirical weight to the molecular formula weight. And I know this is kind of a confusing sentence, and I apologize for that. So what we're going to end up doing is the following. So from example one, what is the molecular formula of the compound if its molecular mass is 261.98 grams? So from example one, our empirical formula was sodium 2 Cr chromium 2O7. Okay. And I'm saying that my molecular weight or my molecular mass is 261.98 grams. I can find the mass of that compound, right? It's just adding up your sodium to chromium to oxygen just like you were doing for your mole conversions. So when we add up our compound, sodium is 22.99 and that's multiplied by 2. Chromium is 52 grams and that's multiplied by 2 and that's added to oxygen 16 times 7 and when I add this up my empirical weight works out to 261.98 okay so now what we need to do is we need to find the ratio of this mass to the molecular mass and that will give us our, our factor to multiply by and we do that by dividing the molecular mass by the empirical mass so we end up with 261.98 divided by 261.98 and that gives us a ratio of 1 and what that means is that our empirical formula is the same as our molecular formula so sodium dichromate Na2Cr2O7 is the lowest whole number ratio we can have but it also happens to be the same as the molecular formula now if we had divided this and let's say my empirical mass was half of half of my molecular mass 
and my ratio came out to 2, I would divide my whole compound by 2, and you might need to do that for some things. Um, and the formula is given in your notes. So n equals, or the integer equals the molecular divided by the empirical. And you're going to be using this a lot as we try and figure out the molecular formulas of a lot of these compounds. And this also takes a lot of practice. So to do this, you need to read section 3.5 in the text. Um, there are two worksheets. The first one is determining the empirical formula from our mass percent. And then we need to determine the molecular formula. So the second half of this podcast. And then chapter 3 has three questions that deal on it. And again, they're just more practice. So um, make sure you, you get good practice in on this. And I believe this is objective. Actually, let me double check. Uh, just number six, looking at objective six. So after you watch the percent composition, move on to this. And we can watch objective, or we can check off objective 4.6 in class. So if you have questions, please ask me then, and I will see you there.